Welcome to Discovering. Well, it's the end of March, and Mother Nature has once again proven that she'll get the last laugh. But nothing says spring quite like the smell of sap turning into maple syrup. Baking maple syrup, doing all this stuff up here, what makes it neat to live up in the UP, and why I think everybody who, who lives here, we all have that in common, and why everybody wants to live here. That's all tonight, so sit back, put your feet up. It's Monday night, and time for Discovery. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a longtime lover of northern Michigan. This time of year, we don't need much of an excuse to get out in the woods. And collecting sap to make maple syrup is certainly one of the best. Uh, we're right outside of Iron Mountain, about 15 minutes outside of town at our family camp. And um, we've tapped approximately 300 trees this year, have 300 bags out. Uh, we've probably collected over 500 gallons as of today. So we'll make quite a bit of maple syrup this year. It's the fluctuating temperatures of springtime that causes the sap to flow. Carbohydrates produced by photosynthesis during the summer are stored in the trunks and roots of sugar maples in the form of starch. It's been building up for a couple days, so if you let it sit in the bag when it gets cold like this, then you still have sap to collect versus just big ice chunks. Starch is converted to sugar and dissolves in the sap. When temperatures rise above freezing, positive pressure develops in the tree, which causes sap to flow. So what's nice when you have ice left in the bag like that is even though it's kind of getting late into the season, when you get sap in there, it keeps it nice and cold, so it preserves it. So I think that really helps the longevity of the season and helping you get better maple syrup when you have that cold sap that doesn't get ruined by warm temperatures or sunlight. When temperatures fall below freezing, negative pressure develops, drawing water into the tree through the roots. This replenishes the sap in the tree, allowing it to flow again during the next warm period. These bags are UV rated, so they protect the sap from the sun, which, uh, makes a big difference to getting a better, better quality sap. Temperatures too warm or too cold during the short six week season will reduce the amount of sap flow resulting in a bad year for maple syrup producers. It's actually March 24th, it's been very nice warm weather. Today we've had a snowstorm roll in, but this is usually what the weather is like when I'm tapping trees. So every single one of these bags has a, has a tap in it. Uh, those taps are pounded in between an inch, an inch and a half depending on the tree. Uh, the bags collect, so we, we physically go around and do a manual collection. So family comes out, friends come out, my in-laws come out, and we collect whenever the sap is running. Even though it's below freezing yesterday and today, the sap is running. And this weather that we're getting is prolonging the season. See, when it freezes like that, you get all that water is frozen. It gives you a better sugar content, so you're collecting more of the sugar water than you are just the water. The purpose of the evaporator is to boil all that water off to get down where you're just cooking the sugar content, the 2% that's in here, and that's what makes the maple syrup. So the ice actually helps us. If you go to a larger operation, other people have line systems and they're vacuuming the sap into one collection area. But we utilize the tractor and we go around and physically hand collect. And um, I think we enjoy that because you get exercise, you get to walk around your property, uh, you see things you don't normally see. This is a great time of year. The woodpeckers are around. Birds are starting to come back slowly, but surely uh, your remnants of deer and their deer trails and deer habits of what's going on on your property this time of year. So not only the main benefit of having maple syrup on your pancakes and French toast, but just being out in the woods this time of year, uh, monitoring your property, looking at your tree health and socializing with your friends and family is all part of the maple syrup making process, which is why we enjoy it so much here. On to the next one. So 
So here's another mystery of maple groves and maple syrup is we're standing in the middle of a very healthy maple grove here. That tree right over there is sapping and fine. This smaller one is a healthy tree and then you have this dead one right in the middle of it. I don't know why, but what's nice about this tree is you wanna cut down your hardwoods that are dead in your maple grove, uh, not only to stop the competition from the other trees, but you saw this up, you cut it up, you bring it back to your sugar shack, and this is what you need to make the fuel to make your maple syrup. So you're recycling a lot of the trees that you're, cu that you're cutting down in your maple grove when you're making maple syrup. And whenever I'm walking through my grove or someone else's grove, I'm always looking at trees like this, all the things you can do to maintain your maple grove. And if you want to, this can become a year round uh, maintenance game if you want to get big time into maple syrup. So here's another way to keep your maple grove healthy is even though this is a pretty good sized tree here, um, I hung the bag on the bigger of the two because uh, probably the end of this month or in April, we'll cut this off. And whenever you're pruning your maple grove, when you have two trees coming together, uh, you only want there to be one tree, the straightest part of the tree uh, that promotes the health and the growth of the tree. So even though you've got two good looking trees here, what you really want to do is cut this smaller one off nice and clean in any month that has an R in it and then let this tree uh, get bigger, grow wider, and it'll be a healthier tree for your maple grove. This is a pretty interesting maple tree setup because that direction is facing due south, this direction is due north. If you look at both of those bags, the bag on the south has sap in it, the bag on the north, north does not. The reason for that is because when the sun comes from east to west, it's always shining onto the southern slopes or southern hemisphere side. So what happens is the tree on the south side warms up and saps, whereas the north side is not, it's still froze. And you can see that going on right there. The other thing, is this tree has two bags on it. The reason for that is because that diameter base where we've tapped is greater than 16 inches in diameter. Therefore, uh, you're not affecting the tree's health at all by putting uh, more than one tap in the tree. So these bags, just a certain way you put them on, you put them through the ring wrap them around real well so when they get all that weight in there they don't slide off so you wrap it around the outside edges then you tuck them under and wrap them around like so and you put the hood over and the hood has two grooves in it so what you do is you're sliding that ring with the bag right into these grooves so when you pull down on the bag it pulls on the groove that's where you hang it and as you can see you know the liquid weighs about eight pounds a gallon these are four gallon bags so this will hold quite a bit of weight if you fill it up just hanging on the tree and the bag stays snug when you do it right. If you don't do it right, you end up like me and you come out here and you're picking up bags all the time. <laughs> So we're getting ready to light the evaporator and uh, the way that the evaporator works is it works with uh, convection. It uh, rotates the maple syrup around it, weaves it and comes out one area when it's done. Well, last time we poured off on that side, so this time we're gonna pour off on this side. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna reverse the flow by opening up this plug so the sap will come into this baffle right here and flow this way through the evaporator into the syrup pan and it will flow in through that opening 
around this way, snake through and come into here and we'll pour off here this time when it gets to be the right temperature. So what I just did is I opened up the gravity fed tank. The valve is letting pure sap come in under its own gravity. The reason it's doing that is because this float hasn't shut the valve off. So this will equalize itself. You'll continue to hear the sap will run slower and slower and then we're gonna light the fire. trying to do is get this sap in this maple syrup pan up to 219 degrees and right now it's at 214 and a half and when it gets to the seven uh, which will be 219 degrees that's when we're going to pour off that's pure maple syrup water boils at 212 degrees it changes daily based on barometric pressure so when it gets to 219 it'll be maple syrup and then I'll use hydrometers and some other tools inside uh, kitchen to finish the maple syrup off to make sure it's the right consistency. But when it's at 219, we pour off and it's it's usually very, very close. That's what we're standing around waiting for. So what we do with our maple syrup around here is actually filter the sap twice before it boils. And then when it comes out maple syrup, it runs through this double filter here. There's a paper filter and a wool filter. And then that maple syrup gravity feeds through there into the pan. And the more you filter your sap and maple syrup, the better it will be. So it's, it's getting right to about 219. The needle's fully on it. So we're gonna open up this valve and pure maple syrup is gonna pour out. We're just gonna trickle a little out. The more you filter it, the better the better quality maple syrup you're gonna get because you're taking all the all the sediment out of it. And then as we pour out, we watch the gauge. As long as we have 219, we'll keep it open. And if it goes cools off and goes less, we shut the valve. But see, as I open that and we pour it off, it actually increased the temperature a little bit because now the maple syrup is closer to the fire. Now it's starting to cool off a little. And now it crept back up. So we'll just let this trickle in and. Hopefully we get a nice big pour here. Very high tech filter holding system, which is a, a drill bit, uh, which I put on here in a, in a panic one day because I didn't have a filter ready. Turns out to be pretty functional because when I want to move the filter around or balance it, all I have to do is turn the drill bit and it balances and moves my filter around really well. It's been the, uh, the bag holder, the filter holder ever since. So this is the second time we've drawn off today and uh, we're getting really good pours. We've probably got about a gallon and a half of maple syrup out of 40 gallons of uh, sap. So. That's actually better than the ratio. It usually takes about 40 to one. You know, Mother Nature's been good. It's been a good good maple syrup year so far, and this second pour of today is proving, proving us right. Pure sap is coming in on that valve right here. You can hear it trickling in, and pure maple syrup is coming out this valve, and you can hear it trickling into the pan as well. Three years ago, uh, I had purchased this and uh, I had this thing set up just at the garage and half the, half the evaporator was in the garage and the stack was sticking out and I kind of had it tied down to a cinder block in the driveway and you know it showed up with no directions and if it wasn't for a good friend of mine showing me how this thing would put together, I mean it was pretty stressful at the time. But we got up and running and, and my dad unbeknownst to me at the time, really enjoyed coming out and spending time with us, making the maple syrup, collecting and doing all this stuff. And 
So then we talked about it and we decided that we wanted to build a, a sugar shack, which is where we're in now and it's kind of almost done. But all the wood that is that you're seeing here that we built the building with came from our property and we put it through a uh, sawmill. And so we built it, we made all the lumber. Uh, so all the log siding, all the trim, all the paneling, all the trusses, the cupola, everything. And it took a while and uh, my dad, um, I lost my dad this past September, actually in, at the very end of August, and uh, he just loved coming up to camp at that point and helping with the maple syrup and helping build the shack and just being around the guys. And my brother and his kids helped build it. My father-in-law came out and helped build it. My son, uh, who's just now two, and my wife and my mom and everybody would kind of come out and help all the time, and he really enjoyed that. And what was interesting for us or for me was my dad was not a camp guy. He, he didn't want to go hunting or get cold, but my brothers and I and sister, we all wanted a camp. So he, he found us a camp, which is our, this is where we are now at our family camp. And, and he really enjoyed the maple syrup process. So we built this building and got into it. And uh, last year, last maple syrup season, my dad was able to be here and, and in a building that we had a shell up and had a hole in the roof so we could make maple syrup. and. It's kind of why I like doing it so much is being up at our at our place here with my brothers and sisters. It reminds me of my dad a lot, and uh, he enjoyed the maple syrup making process. I think that's just one of the reasons why I like doing it is it reminds me of my dad and it brings the family together. And someone who's never been around maple syrup always finds it interesting. And it's everything from the tapping of the trees to the knowledge of the woods, the slope of the hill, and where to put the tap, how to tap it, all that good stuff. The collection. It's just a great time of year to be out at camp in the woods trying trying to get winter out the door and rush summer in and what else would you rather be doing than sitting in a nice semi-warm shack tasting fresh made maple syrup and it's one of the one of the reasons we love living in the UP. You can't make maple syrup up in Alaska because they don't have maple trees. You can't do this in British Columbia because they don't have sugar maple or hard maple. So we live in a unique part of the world that you know we're fortunate enough to be able to make maple syrup and and buy a, a, a sawmill and make your own wood and do all that sort of fun stuff, which I think that's part of the allure why people want to live in the UP or why they find it interesting living in the UP, or, or at least I do, just for the simple fact that you don't have these trees in other parts of the world. You can't do these things if you live in uh, Oklahoma or down in Texas. We just They just don't have the same things we have. So baking makeable syrup and doing all this stuff up here is what, what makes it neat to live up in the UP and why I think everybody who, who lives here, we all have that in common and why everybody wants to live here. Why That's why we stay. They can be found in nearly every house in Finland, as well as camps and backyards across the UP. Some of come in all shapes and sizes. Here's a look at some built right here in the Upper Peninsula. The barrel concept actually come out of uh, Canada. Uh, there is some other uh, builders here in the UP, uh, but we're, we're using kill-dried western red cedar. The western red cedar is a rot-free wood. Uh, it holds up real good in the weather. And uh, the only thing we're doing here is uh, putting a uh, water seal on the outside to uh, maintain the color. The barrel sauna is constructed of staves. It's a ball and socket joint, so it tightens up really nicely. Our straps are now powder coated. Our stove is designed so it fires from the outside so we have no ash or bark mess inside the sauna. We do install some windows. It is double strength glass. We can't use plexiglass because of the heat. There is a fire safety factor here. We use a half inch smit board to relieve the heat of the stove from the wood. And also on the ceiling, we use a triple wall pipe that goes through the wood. So we have absolutely no issues with uh, anything catching on fire. All of our saunas are equipped with a removable board in the floor so we can get in there to do any cleaning or servicing as needed. There's just a few screws in there. We can remove that one board and then it's easily put back in place. All the stoves come standard with rocks. We use Lake Superior natural stone. As soon as they're placed where they have to go, 
we load them up with rocks and it takes approximately uh, 100 to 150 pounds of stone. The cubic foot and these saunas are so small in comparison to our wood stove. Uh, the wood stove is, is quite overwhelming, so it doesn't take much wood at all to heat these. Uh, they heat up in uh, 30 minutes to 170 to 180 degrees easily, even in the dead of winter. The idea of the barrel design is uh, the idea of the convection heat. It's an automatic circular uh, heat all by itself, and uh, it circulates from top to bottom. There's nowhere for the heat to be trapped in the top of the ceiling. This is our smallest model. It's very portable. It weighs 500 pounds. Uh, it's very easy to pick up and move around. Uh, our customers are using them on their own trailer and they're, they're just easy to move around and take to the deer camp and bring them back. Uh, then the sizes go up. They go up to this size here. This eight footer is about 700 pounds. And then of course we have our, our big guy here that's a seven foot diameter barrel, 12 foot long with a changing room that weighs about 1,100 pounds. This is our seven foot barrel design is exclusively from Keweenaw Saunas, and it does come in a 12-foot model with a changing room. The sauna is so beneficial health-wise. It's, uh, it's proven to boil toxins from your system. It's good for people with asthmatic problems. And then something that really helps me is, uh, is the heat and the steam for my arthritic pain. Uh, being a contractor all my life and having uh, some arth arthritic fingers and joints. It's very therapeutic to get in there and get warmed up and uh, just makes you feel a lot better. Well, that's it for tonight. If you'd like to keep tabs on what's coming up on Discovering or see where we've been, you can join us on Facebook or go to 906outdoors.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week right here on Discovering. Discovering.